light and heat. Time to take a stand, boys. Time to make a choice. Time to find our courage. Time to be deployed. Make our only stand here. Make our roads complete. All we waited for now. Past the future meet. Get your weapons ready. Kiss the ones goodbye. Now our time is coming. And it is not the time to cry. All of a sudden, I'm singing CCR. You get to hidey, hidey. <clears throat> anyway. All right. What is up, everybody? What's going on? Let me make sure I got my volume upright. Yes. Yes, I do have my volume upright. All right. Let's get rid of the uh, interlude scroll. Let's get rid of the window capture. And there I am. There I am. Hello, everyone. What's going on, everybody? Greetings out there in the world of the internet. What's up, Crip? What's going on, Royks? Hello, Miv. What's up, Burner? Hello, Poke. Kapow. Watch in 19 minutes as I lose an hour. Why are you losing an hour in 19 minutes? I thought Daylight Savings already happened a few weeks ago, didn't it? Are you like, is there, is there like a bizarre area where like Daylight Savings is happening elsewhere? Is that what we're talking about? Poke, what's up, man? <clears throat> Good to see everyone. Um, yeah, why are you losing an hour, Crip? What kind of nonsense is that? How can you, how dare you, how dare you lose an hour? That's terrible. BST is today? BST. Uh, something standard time? What's BST? Oh, that's right. The British get summertime later. You know, you would think, given how incredibly important the British have been to the development of the world... You would think you guys could have figured out a better way to handle that. 
I mean, like, don't, doesn't everything in the world keyed off of Greenwich Mean Time? You would think that, like, at the very least, you guys could have set something up where you don't have to get, you know, summer later. I mean, that's just not, it's not where it's at, man. Unless you'd prefer to keep the hour. Do you like keeping the hour? I do have to say that I think that America's daylight savings time is way too early. Because, uh, you know, it starts now where you start adding, you lose this hour like early March, and it used to be back in the day, you would get daylight savings time at a time and you'd be like, oh, this is great. It's like it was just closing in, like maybe I guess right about now actually, is when you'd be getting it. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, now you're in great shape. But <laughs> daylight savings is your idea. Listen, don't blame me, man. In that regard, my sympathies would have lied to the British. <clears throat> so, you guys should just, uh, you know, it's it's not our fault that, you know, we managed to convince you that it didn't make a lot of sense for you to try to keep us in your empire. And, uh, you know, then once once you were away, we came up with some weird ideas. I mean, that's that's the way that's the way America rolls. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Anyway, it's good to see everybody. I hope everyone is doing well today. Um, we are, uh, this is a uh, little bit of a makeup cast, as I promised I would do if I got work done. I did get a lot of work done. Um, I uh, have some still left to do quite a bit um, that I have to do tomorrow and so on. Um, but I got a lot of work done today, and so I'm, I'm going to take a little bit of a break. Uh, I'm going to stream for a couple hours, um, uh, getting some more Shadowrun Returns Dragonfall done. Um, I have sent off an email. I, I tweeted about this um, earlier on. At uh, Hairbrain Schemes, which are the people that did uh, Shadowrun Returns and also, of course, did Dragonfall. Um, and uh, they got back in touch with me and, you know, said to shoot them an email asking about, because uh, I wanted to know if they could get some of the writers on the show to talk about this game. And uh, they sent something back to me saying to shoot them an email to see if we can set it up. So I sent out that email. So hopefully in the next couple of days, um, we're going to hear from them. And also hopefully because, I mean, I'm playing this a fair amount and I'm putting in a good three, four hours per cast. And it can't be that long. So um, I'm hoping hoping that we actually get them on before I'm done with it, <laughs> um, you know, because that would be that would be interesting. So uh, but yeah, so uh, that's that's what's going on. Uh, hopefully, cross your fingers, we can actually uh, get those folks on board uh, after Shadowrun Returns Dragonfall is done. I am probably going to be doing a fighting fantasy game book. It's been a little while since I've done one of those. So I'll do that as a little palette cleanser uh, before moving. And let me just show you, by the way. This book, that's right, that book right there will be the next one that you will be challenging, chat. Island of the Lizard King. So we will be doing that after I'm done with Shadowrun Returns Dragonfall, and then once uh, Island of the Lizard King is done, then I am moving on to either Blackguards or Might and Magic Legacy X, but I am increasingly um, leaning towards that being Might and Magic. Um, I think I want to give Might and Magic X a try, um, and uh, they just had a DLC that came out for it. I've heard good things about it, so I am going to give it a try, I think. Um, if it's terrible and I hate it and everyone else hates it, I can always do Blackguards instead, but I think that's what I'm going to do, and then after that I'll have to decide do I want to go to Black Guards after Might and Magic is done, or do I want to try a little Heroes of Might and Magic, which is a strategy game, or do I want to try one of the Witchers, or Assassin's Creed 3, or who the heck knows. Um, but that's all down the line. So uh, the plan we're looking at right now is um, finish this up, then Island of the Lizard King, uh, Fighting Fantasy Gamebook, and then on to Might and Magic Legacy, probably. Uh, haven't 100% decided between that and Black Guards, but I'm leaning towards it pretty strongly. So that is what we are looking at. What's up, Build? So that is is the uh yeah that's the time frame that's what we're looking at but today it's uh more shadow run um and uh so yeah so let people know about the stream spread the word um we should go to final fantasy tactics war of the lines that's down the line that might happen after uh might and magic it's possible uh i could very well do that that is that is not out of the realm of possibility yes uh okay all right well let us get uh, let's get cracking here folks let's do it up and let's keep on moving <laughs> play ground zeros Oh, man. It's just so hard to take. I don't know. Sometimes the Metal Gear stuff just gets so... It's it's gotten so cheesy, it's very hard to take it seriously. I mean, I don't know. I think I got off the Metal Gear train right after... Um, was it Metal Gear 3? Sons of Liberty. It was the, it was the first PlayStation 1 um, that I played. Or was it the first... No, no, the first PlayStation 2 one, I mean. First PlayStation 2 uh, Metal Gear, and I think after that I didn't play any of the others. I watched it, I was like, hmm, I don't know. <clears throat> I just, you know, 
looking at this picture, I have to say, <coughs> by the way, apologies, I'm still dealing with this cold, although I'm feeling better, but I'm um, still getting over this cold, so. Um, look at these things. Look at these claws. Why is it that Glory is so terrible? I don't understand why she's so terrible when, I mean, those claws, you'd think she'd be doing more damage. I don't know. It's like, <coughs> Ground Zeroes is the Batman Begins of Metal Gritty Solid, is it really? I could finish Grand Zeroes and still have an entire cast to go through. Oh, shots fired. Shots fired. All right. Let's load this up. All right. First order of business is I have to um, go uh, get... Uh, I have to talk to What's-His-Face about a little side quest that he wants me to do. And then I need to get equipment. Um, I am uh, in need of equipment for my own person. Nice to know I don't have to spend it on my people now because I can't equip their weapons and armor anyway. So... Cujo, what's up, man? Also, by the way, guys, next week, as I have mentioned on several occasions, next week uh, I am going to have a normal cast on Wednesday during the day. And then Thursday night uh, is, with all luck, the return of Infinity and Beyond. We're going to take down Arenicus this time, I swear it. I swear it. Um, and then uh, we're going to move on to, so that'll be that. And then Friday I am driving up to Canada for a convention at Astra. It's one of my favorite international conventions. Um, I do this I do this every year at Astra. Um, and uh, so I'm going to be driving up there on Friday. I may, if I'm ambitious, try to see if I can get a stream in in the morning, um, my time, before I leave. That is, that's definitely ambitious, though. I don't know if that's going to happen um, because I do have a panel on Friday night. I want to say the panel on Friday night is late, probably like 9 or 10, but it's still going to take me about eight and a half, nine hours to get up there. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't want to be driving. I don't want to, like, do a cast and then leave and then have to race at, like, 70 miles an hour for eight consecutive hours without a break um, to get up there in time. That seems to me like a bad idea. So we'll see. Anyway, I, I will think about it. Um, we'll see how things go. But um, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, yes, definitely. Um, Thursday, yes, Baldur's Gate. And then uh, maybe, maybe Friday. But if not, then obviously Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I will be up in uh, Toronto doing this convention. Um, and then I'll be back on Monday and we'll be back into the normal swing of things for a week and then the week after that so we'll have a week normal and then the following week I'm flying out to Seattle for another convention NorwestCon um, so that will also change up um, screaming schedule and stuff like that for that week and then when I get back from that I will be done um, with that at least through um, at least through like the third or fourth week of May when the semester is over and then I'll see about what my summer schedule looks like so uh, just stay tuned for things and we'll kind of see how the schedule goes. Off to Cujo's homeland. I'm coming. To, hey, I told you, Cujo. I, I'm coming to. I'm coming to Ontario, man. You know where it is. It's in Markham. It's in Markham. That's what you got to do. That's all you got to do. You got to go. Hey, Kathleen, what's up? Good to see you, Kathleen. That's all you got to do. You just got to go to Markham. Go to Markham, and you can find it. What's up, Lego? Hey, I disrupted your listening of Crystal Eyes. I apologize. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's see what we got. Hello, Governor. Okay, you still don't want to deal with me, do you? All right. Algernon, Algernon, Algernon. I need to buy some things from you, sir. Okay, here we go. Outfits. Let's start with this. Cult robes. Plus willpower, plus one spellcasting. That's nice. Ah, Summoner's Guard Armor. Plus one Charisma, plus one Spirit Control. I'm looking at that. That's very likely to be what I'm going to get, but let's make sure. Um, yeah. No, that's definitely what we're getting. Plus one Charisma, plus one Spirit Control. Yes, please. Confirmed. Increases my armor. Gives me uh, plus one Charisma, which I already had, but also plus one Spirit Control. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's up? Look at that. Look at the comparison. Before. After. My name's Arv. Arv and <laughs> uh, What's going on? Hey, you see what's up? That's troubling, Crip. <laughs> no, I'm not going to PAX. Um, uh, I was thinking I might go to PAX East. Um... I, I was never gonna, I was not likely ever to be going to PAX. I might have gone to PAX East, um, but it kind of depended on whether Foom and Inom were going to make the trip. 
Um, and uh, pretty much it came out that they that they weren't going to be able to do it because Foom has got too much other like there's money situations and stuff like I mean it's just it's difficult to you know drop that kind of cash um, to get out there um, and so uh, that basically meant that it wasn't likely I could make it out without him just because you know timing was going to be really tight anyway honestly it would have meant that I would have had Ad Astra this weekend Pax East the following weekend and then Norwest on the weekend after which would have been pretty rough since that's also closing in on the end of my semester by the time we get to the end of that so I, I don't know it would have been it would have been rough anyway so yeah the usual insomnia. Sorry, Yixie. Sorry, man. Sorry. Okay. Alright, let's see. Air barrier. Slow two. Fog. Let's do that. Let's do... <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh. Acid Bolt 2? Yes, please. I know Acid Bolt 1 has been doing the job. Alright, Fog, Acid Bolt, and what else? I don't think I can... I don't think I can use any of these. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Fog, blah, 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 and then slow. Okay. Now, let's see. We're going to... What do we have that I can sell? I think that's actually all of those. Nice. Now, I'm starting to look together. Now, we're starting to, now we're starting to get this stuff going. Put that there. that there and this there we go acid bolt 2 please haha <laughs> that's what I'm talking about it does double the damage yes sir probably get a better rifle too What did, I think, what did I think of Goat Simulator? I thought it was very silly. <laughs> I liked it. It was funny. It reminded me a little bit of watching um, Foom play Just Cause 2, which is one of the funniest casts I've ever seen, actually. It's just so funny playing with the physics and stuff. It was a little troubling, but... Oh my god, how you doing, Viz? Welcome in, Viz. Premature Gats Raid? Already lurking Gats raid. Oh, nice. Welcome in, Massive Death. Welcome in, guys. Thank you so much for the raid, for the possible coming raid. What's up, Morden? What's up, Draconian? Monkey Commando. What's up, man? <laughs> Viz, how are, Viz, how are you doing, man? What what happened there? What do you mean you just got back home from the hospital? What happened to you, Viz? Seb, what's up, Seb? Hello, Dragon Spear. What's going on? Sabotis. Yes, Sabotis, you knew about this, Seb. What's up, Seb? Oh, really, Kathleen? It's really good to see you guys. Thank you all so much for the raid. I appreciate it. Thanks, you guys. If you're not already following Gats, you should be. Um, I have raided him on several occasions. Whoops. Um, okay. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for the raid. I appreciate it. And Viz, what's going on with you, man? How are you feeling, dude? Okay, how am I doing on the coin? Okay. Oh, that, that's cool. I understand he's got stuff that he's got to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's up? Spirit control. Love it. 
Your hands got a little burned, so it's kind of hard to type. Wow, dude. Holy cow, Viz. Dude, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, well, thanks for um, thanks for being here. I hope you're all right. And yeah, just hang in and uh, chill and watch, man. I'm sorry to hear that, dude. What's up, Bill? Good to see you. Yeah, these are uh, Biodynamics DT770s, man. In fact, I have not one, but two pairs of the same headphones. Um, these things are amazing, Seb. Amazing. Most comfortable headphones I've ever had. So... <laughs> Lego. Appreciate it. I mean, they're already here, so they'll probably know. But anyway, yeah. Sorry, Viz. Hope all's well. 32 seconds. What? Hi, Philly. Jeez, I hope you're alright, Viz. It's terrible, man. Okay. So now I got that. Now I gotta go over. Actually, the guy that I'm going to is the one that I want to go to, so... That will be good timing. <clears throat> This guy up here. Who recommended them to me? My, actually, uh, my former one of my former guitarists in my band said, when he was uh, mixing our, and mastering our second album, um, he said, you know, these are super comfortable. And I had gone back and forth between... I've always liked the over-ear kind because the, the ones that fit on top of your ear hurt my ears, always. Like, I just they're just uncomfortable. So these I put on and I can wear them forever. The only problem with these things is that... Um, like, the reason Inam has problems with, like, ones like these is because they give him what he calls hot ear. And it is true that especially during the summer, these, I can, I, it gets hot in here and they can sweat, like, you know, and it gets a little disgusting. So they've got to be cleaned and washed and all that stuff. But, anyway. No, no, don't take a pick. I just want to know how you're doing, man. Good grief. But, uh, yeah. You didn't know I was in a band, Kathleen? Really? I've had, uh, don't, I don't know if you've ever caught the beginning of my cast, but the opening theme is from my second album. And actually, our third album, um, is, uh, our EP, which is an EP, actually, uh, is in the process of being mixed and mastered, although, uh, this is kind of funny. So I found out about three days ago, the guy got in touch with me and said that, um, it was going to be a little longer because the studio, uh, the building where the studio is located was shut down. The basement level, I should say, of the building was shut down. <laughs> So they had to find a new place for the studio. So they found a new um, area now that they're renting, and now they're moving all the equipment in there. But it obviously has slowed things down by a couple of weeks. But I was just like, man. Because if you've ever been to Brooklyn and you've been to Williamsburg, which is where the studio is, Williamsburg looks like an absolute hole. It's like everything you imagine from, like, the old Escape from New York movie of, like, the 80s, right? Except that, you know, everyone who lives there are, like, these obnoxious hipsters with lots of money. So it's, like, tons of money, and every, every building there looks completely run down, like shabby chic type of thing. So apparently that's what happened here as well. But anyway, so the um, third album's a little delayed, but it will happen, so... Hey, what's up, Law? Good to see you, man. Okay, uh, right. Let's see. Got your message about that missing shipment. How can I help? Hi. A gang from a nearby Keys has been hijacking shipments born for the Kreuz Bazaar, taking money out of our pockets. I could use your help to stop this from happening. Your dear departed Monica used to provide encryption and information control for the Kreuz Bazaar. Now that she's gone... We merchants have been having no end of trouble. The obvious answer is that the gang has been intercepting our communications. What kind of communications? Shipping manifests, payment orders, that kind of thing. A group with an agenda could use that information to set an ambush, and that's just what this gang has been doing. Several cargo trucks full of goods have already been hijacked en route to the Croix Bazaar. I had a tracking device placed in the last shipment that I sent out. Containers full of weapons and medical supplies. Sure enough, it got taken, and I've tracked it to Goisenbrunn. If you've never been there, it's a Kiev's built up at an old U-Bahn station and some old bunkers. Rumor has it a new gang called the Rabengeister is holed up there. I suspect that the two things are related. So I need you to go to the Goisenbrunn, find the Rabengeister, and get our goods back. I can offer you 500 new yen for the task. And if you can recover our missing weapons shipment, I'll be able to sell you some better hardware, too. You tell me anything else about this gang, the Rabengeister? <clears throat> yeah, definitely follow the Lawkeeper. He yeah, streamed the C++ homework. <laughs> Not much, I'm afraid. From what I've heard, the Rabengeister are tricky. They have a reputation for stirring up trouble and disappearing trace. I would tread carefully in Gazenbrunnen if I were you. How do I get to Gazenbrunnen? 
Just take the U-Bahn. The line still runs, though not many folks stop at Gaisenbrunnen anymore. The market there used to be something of a tourist attraction. But I think they've fallen on hard times recently. I'll take care of it. Good. It's about time I had some new inventory come in. And one more thing, Arvin Eroran. I'm going to need you to go in light on this one. Take a friend along if you like, but no more than one. Oh, great. If you spooked them, they could trash the merchandise. Best go quiet. Best go soon, too, before the trail goes cold. Man, so I can only take one of these guys? Really? Alright, let me check and see what I got. <sighs> of course I can only bring one person. Of course. Okay, I need a rifle, rifle, rifle. Rifle! Grenade launcher. Hey Thor, what's up, man? What is my favorite element? Uh, I'm not. What do you mean, uh, Kathleen? What do you mean? What is my favorite element? Element of what? Why am I not seeing rifles? He's got to have rifles, right? Am I missing this? Rifle, rifle. AK-97. There we go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Range combat through. Oh, okay. Well, screw that. <laughs> Never mind. Alright. How am I doing on health here? Especially if I'm bringing these things. If I'm only bringing one person. Alright, that's not bad. Okay, one person. That's going to be interesting. Then I have to decide which ones. Not too much, man. Good to see you. Yeah, I understand, Viz. I'm really sorry to hear that, man. I hope that everything is going okay. Viz, uh, Viz had a little bit of a hand injury, so um, Viz has got his hands bandaged. So no one give Viz any grief about his not being able to type, okay? There's extenuating circumstances. Alright, let's save this. Say that there. How am I doing on that? How much money do I have towards that? I think I've got like fifty thousand, and I'm pretty sure I have like twenty-five. So I could actually deposit some of my own money to help with that, plus what I'm going to get when I do this other side mission. So we'll see. I know, right? Okay. All right, let's see. Travel to the Gozenbrunnen U-Bahn station to locate Ganari's missing shipments. Only supposed to bring one? Really? See, okay, if I'm going to bring one person, the question is, do I bring Iger or do I bring Blitz? I feel like I've got to bring Iger because I need someone who can do damage, but Blitz is my Decker. I really hope I don't need a Decker. That's all I'm going to say. I, I better not need a Decker. I better, I better not have a Decker. I better need a Decker. I better not need a Decker, I mean. Oh, periodic table. Fire, air, water, earth, left, death. Um... Well, in general terms, life. <laughs> but probably more specifically, probably air, I would say, Kathleen. I'm a big fan of air in general. What? Why am I getting so bad? Every time someone does something so bad, I always get blamed for it. I'm telling you, man. So wrong. Hard times. It is a short train ride to Goisenbrunnen. You exit the subway car, stepping onto the old grungy platform. The place is deserted, though signs of life are everywhere. A gaping hole in the ceiling filters cool, hazy light in from above. To your right, a small plot of crops struggles to endure in the cold and the limited light of the station. Trash and junk litters the platform. It's clear this place hasn't had anything resembling a janitorial staff in quite some time. 
Somewhere in this old, run-down U-Bahn station lies the entrance to Jason Gesundbrunnen Keys, and hopefully some leads on the whereabouts of the Rabengeister and Gunari's missing shipment. Alright. Alright, time to get you some equipment. And... Yeah. Um, the only problem is I don't have Ventrilovis. Um, I, I, so normally I wouldn't mind, and I'm, I'm happy to have people interact with me most of the time, but I don't have Vent, and I kind of don't really have this set up to be able to easily accommodate TeamSpeak playing this game and stuff. It would take me a while to do it. I'm sorry, man. Normally I would, but... Yeah, no, I like team. I prefer team speak myself, but the problem is not that as much as it is that I don't really have this setup to do that, um, because it's uh, the it's a long story. <laughs> um, the way that it's kind of set up to do this doesn't really work out so well. I'm sorry. What's up, Div? I'll try to think and see if there's a way that I can add it in, um, and like kind of for the next time I can maybe see if it's something I could do. But with with this game, I haven't done it as much as well. So sorry. Sorry. I apologize. Uh, yeah, no, it's not so much like I could. I mean, I I have Teamspeak, so that would be fine. But that's not the problem. It's that it's not, I don't really have it set up to do like with my system currently. Um, with this particular game, so it would take a lot of like juggling and stuff with OBS, and I'm not going to be casting all that long tonight anyway. Just a couple hours, so I kind of don't want to spend. 15 to 20 minutes of it trying to reconfigure something new. So, sorry, man. Uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, so my element would be... I got you, Kathleen. My element would be uh, air. No, I, I, I remember what she was talking about. She was talking about the elements. Yeah, I would say uh, air. Actually, let me get rid of that one. My That would be my element is air. I'm going to get rid of a few of these because I don't need... Okay, let's see. Now I can say this thing new. I see you, Thor. Air is awesome, man. You can fly. So many cool things. I mean, granted, if you use fire, you get the whole fireball thing going on. So that's cool. What the hell am I doing here? What am I doing in this mission? I'm trying to locate the missing shipments. That's right. I need to find the entrance to Gisenbrunnen. I'm not pronouncing that right at all. I'm sure. I'm, I probably every time I'm doing that, uh, I imagine that Seb is uh, Seb is wincing. Is it uh, Gesundbrunnen? Gesund? 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 Gesundbrunnen and Rabengeister? Is it first of all? Is it Robengeister or Rabengeister? And then is it Gesund? Like, as in Gesundheit, so Gesundbrunnen. Am I doing that even close to right? Aha! Hello! Maybe wondering what I'm doing here. Well... That's far enough, friend. An older man raises his hand, squinting as you approach. To his, left, to his left, a young orc shifts his weight, resting one hand casually on a pistol at his hip. Both are dressed in what may be considered uniforms, but it's hard to tell for sure. We don't get many visitors down here these days. And you'll forgive me for saying... Seb, I wanted to know how whether I was pronouncing something... some uh, Pronouncing a German thing right. So you gotta give me a second. Ooh, that sounds awesome, Kathleen. That sounds awesome. Seb, let me get through this little cutscene thing, this little conversation, and I'll tell you what I was asking. I wanted you to find out about my pronunciation. <laughs> What's up, Thousand? 
No, don't don't tell Seb to go sleep yet. He needs to help me with pronunciation on this word. We don't get many visitors down here these days. You'll forgive me for saying, but, well, you don't really look like the type that usually comes through here. He looks fed, for one thing. The older man snorts. Indeed. So what brings you to... Okay, here's the word. Seb. Oh. Hey, yeah. Thank you very much, IAK Enforcer. That guy, by the way, IAK Enforcer 21 is here because I saw him uh, over at, um, I think it was Gilt's, um, Giltonum stream. And IAK happens to be a soccer team in Athens, and I have their jersey. In fact, I said I was going to wear it, but it's actually now in the room where my wife and daughter are asleep. So if I go in, I'm going to wake them up. So I'm going to have to show it to you later. But I actually have a jersey from IAK. And when I was in Athens, this is like 10, 11 years ago, I asked the guy, I, liked, I love soccer jerseys. I have like eight or nine of them. And so I asked the guy, do you have a soccer jersey for a team? And I said, but I don't want a team like in baseball, the New York Yankees. I don't because I'm a Red Sox fan. I don't want a team that's like buys its player, like, you know, goes out its way to just like basically outspend everybody. I want a team that's a good team, but it's like a scrappy team. And he was like, you want IAK. Um, and so, yeah, so I got this jersey from IAK. So, nice. Thank you very much. Take the oath. Welcome in. Thank you for the uh, follow. I appreciate that very much. So anyway, so that's why IAK was here. So what's up, IAK? Um, so and it's actually the same thing. You can call me for a second. So the problem is though, it's the same thing, Seb. I, I wouldn't be able to. I, I don't have Teamspeak set up to work on this computer yet. I got I got to get that going. Um, I did have it set to work up, and then I had to reinstall something. Long story. Um, but anyway, so listen. Um, am, am I saying this word even close to right, um, Seb? Um, Gesundbrunnen. Is it Gesundbrunnen? Gesundbrunnen? Because I'm thinking it's kind of like Gesundheit, but I don't know if it's Gesundheit and there would be Gesundbrunnen or what? Am I getting that anywhere close? Yes, yeah, soccer or football as everyone in the world except America calls it. <laughs> okay, uh, what brings you to Gesundbrunnen? Skype is cool too? Alright, okay. Alright. I think I do have Skype. Hold on. Oh, thank you very much, Take the Oath. I appreciate that, sir. I uh, appreciate that very much. Thank, Welcome to our community. Welcome to the Arvanauts. And uh, I'm uh, just about to hear from a native German how to pronounce this word that I don't know how to pronounce. <coughs> Excuse me, still getting over a cold. All right, Seb, where are you? All right, bear with me. Oh, hello. What's up, Seb? So, ladies and wait, whoa, whoa, let me, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the great um, Sabotis. Uh, oh just my in case God. Anyone, I just just want everyone <laughs> to know, formerly of Destructoid fame, all, still currently of DJ fame, um, and uh, Twitch fame. So, am I kidding? So, so how do you pronounce it? Tell me. Uh, it's actually Gesundbrunnen. Gesundbrunnen. Yeah. So gesund as in gesund tight, but it's the same like that's exactly. just the open. Okay, gesund brunnen, stranger. And brunnen is like the fountain. The brunnen is like it's the, the fountain. It's the German German word for fountain. Okay, yeah. so it means God blessed fountain. Is that no, not God blessed. It's like more wealth. Oh, like so it's like health. a fountain blessed with wealth. I see. Okay, okay. Seb is the guy. Health. Yeah, exactly, massive. Seb's the guy we go to to ask how to pronounce German words. I, I know that I could get it from Uncle Stalin also. Um, there was a rather troubling moment, though, um, a few weeks ago, where which Lego pointed out. I think it was Lego, where at some point I said something like, Stalin said something about thief or something. I was like, I don't agree, Stalin. <laughs> so Lego quoted it like, Stalin, I don't agree. I was like, yes, I think I generally do. No, your English is fine, take the oath. Your English is fine. Welcome in. Hey, what's up, Penguins fan? Good to see you, man. Can you be on Skype, Skype? Yes, Fizz, you can be on Skype, Skype. Okay, so Gesundbrunnen. So um, I have to ask you, Seb, um, as someone who has spent much more time in Berlin than I have, because I spent all of about three days there, and you know, you spend way more time than I do. Has, from what you've seen of this game, has this caught some of what the, now granted, it's dystopian future, it's like 60 years ahead of us, so whatever, it's gotta, you gotta, you gotta allow for fall, the society falling apart a bit, but 
is this at all like similar to what you might have expected like some of the look and feel did they get any of it right uh, I haven't checked the DLC yet because I was busy playing other games and it's have... awesome by the way yeah yeah I know I've seen that stuff that I've seen is very good but like in terms of graphics and, and stuff I think they kept it very much to the to the stories that they heard in in the Shadowrun series so I I guess and I hope I hope uh, it will be very close okay. to how, what it is. How far outside Berlin do you live? You live a few hours from there south, right? I, I live like okay, I, I uh, we separate like Germany like four parts. It's like the northeast where Berlin is, then the northwest to west, then the middle of Germany and then south of Germany. And south of Germany is most of the time Bavaria. So I live in the middle of Germany, so I have a pretty long ride to go there. If I if I go to by bus, it's seven hours. But if you go so by the bus. if you go by the um by the autobahn, it's like an hour, right? Because you go 170 no, miles an hour. No, 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 it's kidding. still seven hours. <laughs> really? I wish. I mean, I, if, if I if I had a super fast car, <laughs> and most of the time of the autobahn, there's no speed limitations. I could go there in like three to four hours. That's yeah. I see. I, I remember driving um, up to Berlin, and this is back in 2000 when I went to Oberammergau to see the Passion Play. And I remember driving up to Berlin, and I was in a, uh, I think I was in a, um, an Opel. Um, I was in an Opel Astra, I want to say. And at one point, I hit 100 and, uh, oh, I got it. I got it. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I'll add you in a second, Viz. Um, so I got, uh, I was going to, like, I, I got up to a hundred and I want to say 19, just, just once. I just wanted to say once <laughs> in my life I'd gotten that, that high, right? That's it? That's it. Well, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, dude, in an Opal Astra, like, it's amazing it didn't blow apart at the seams when I did a hundred. Uh, like, the you Astra know. was one of the better cars from Opal, though. Maybe. That's true. That's true. But I mean, for me anyway, my wife was asleep in the car. If I went a little faster, I think she would have been like, what are you doing? And I would have been like acting like a child. But anyway, so I'm going 119. Then I slow down, and at 108, I look in my my uh, mirror, and there's a car behind me in the left lane. And for those of you who don't know, the autobahn is not. People hear the autobahn and they think, oh, you can go as fast as you want. So it's like a huge highway. That's not true. The autobahn in many places has two lanes on either side. It's so least. At least. So it's not like four or five lanes, and it's like a super wide going straight. It winds and stuff. Like it's not. So I'm in the right lane, and I'm going, you know, as I say, I'm slowing down from 119 to like 100, and I'm about 107, and I see this car um, in my <laughs> mirror, right, and I look up to the road, and I look down, and the mirror's next, the car's next to me, and then I look up again, and it's past me. It must have been doing 145. It must have been. I, I was like, I was standing still. Dude, there are people are driving with 180 to 109. I, I was like, what the cr and, and so I was like, okay, so obviously, how do cops catch anyone? And then I found out from a friend of mine um, who was German that the reason is that they drive these souped up ridiculous BMWs that are so fast that they could pretty much take down most cars on the road, apparently. Like, they, they don't joke around, um, he told me. But I was, yeah, so I remember being like, wow, those people do not mess around. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but you do have to take a bus. Do you have a car then? No, no, I don't have a driver's, driver's license oh. yet. Didn't have time to do it back in the day when I was working, and now it's a financial thing. So. Oh, I see, I see. I got you. No, that's miles, Div, not, not kilometers per hour. Kilometers per hour, I think kilometers, every, uh, the way I imagine miles and kilometers is whatever miles are, kilometers is like 150,000 times that. So I think, because because that's the way it always sounds. Oh, like. you were thinking <laughs> in miles? Oh, yeah, it was miles. 107 oh, miles. Oh, okay. So that's okay. like 500 and 600, 568,000 kilometers an hour. <laughs> okay, you said 119 119. But when the car okay. passed me, I was doing 107. I was doing 107. Let me calculate that. I have to. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let me get uh, let me get Viz in here. Well, okay, that's pretty fast. Yeah, that's, that's what I meant with 190. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's like the usual, like 107 is not the usual speed. I mean, that was very fast. I mean, when you when you're on the autobahn, you drive like, uh, let me calculate that real quick. Maybe like around 130, 150 mile, uh, kilometers per hour, hey. like 80 miles. Yeah, that's yeah. that's normal travel speed. 
Is it, what's up, Viz? How you doing, man? Well, uh, thank you, because I can't type for shit at the moment, but yeah. <laughs> no problem, man. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Viz on, uh, on Skype. Um, Hello, Viz. So, so, yeah, so, uh, so uh, okay. That's interesting. Yeah, because, I mean, well, I, the thing is that, like, I, and I had been warned, if you're going to drive on the Autobahn, and I was like, hell yes, I'm going to drive on the Autobahn. Are you kidding me? But, like, if you're going to drive on the Autobahn, because I've been driving since I was 17. Like, I've been driving for a long time. I love driving. I make, I've made huge trips. I drive out to Indianapolis and back every year, um, which is a, uh, which is basically an over, what is it, over an 18-hour trip, um, one direction. Damn. Uh, 16 hours, I think, is what it comes out to. I've driven down to rural Virginia, which was about 16 and a half hours. So I love driving. Um, and so when I was on the Autobahn, I'm like, yeah. And the guy was like, you need to understand, don't make sure you're in the right lane when you're not passing. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you can't yeah. can't overtake one on, on the right lane. Right, right. And, I, and I'm oh. a big fan of the whole pass on the left, stay in the right, whatever, right? And I'm like, okay, yeah, of course I understand that, blah, blah, blah. Then I realized it's because you'll die. Like, I mean, you'll just straight up die. Like, they, they won't slow <laughs> down. Like, They'll it's just... funny. Everybody is so hyped about the Autobahn and they want to go. and But they don't really realize that you're fucking going to die if you don't pay fucking attention. Oh, yeah, no, there's no question about it. Like that and that's the thing. Once once that car passed me like I was standing still when I was decelerating from 119 to 107, that's when I was like, "Okay." <laughs> I was like, "So, so when my wife did wake up later on, and she's asleep this whole time, and when she woke up later on and I was doing a uh, you know, a, a miserly 85 or whatever, and she's like, "You know, hi, hun, you know, has has it been fun?" And I was like, "Yes." <laughs> and then she's like, "Well, did anything happen?" I'm like, no, nothing happened. And she's like, why did, did, did you get it? Did, did you almost get an accident? I'm like, no, not exactly. <laughs> she was just like, what? <laughs> it was very much like, this is, we never talk about this again. Oh, man. No, no, everything was fine. It was all Everything good. was great. I wasn't driving at 119. I wasn't being irresponsible. I didn't get passed by a car like I was doing 20 miles an hour on a back road somewhere. Oh, man. But anyway, welcome into the people who have just come in, by the way. Um, and uh, yeah, Glog. Oh, no, Glog. Massive. I'm a huge fan of Glog. You kidding me? Glog has given a lot of the Glog games. Glog is stream. the Santa of Twitch. Yeah, absolutely. Glog's a badass. I was hanging out a little bit with Glog earlier on when I was watching Optic doing Goat Simulator, which, by the way, is silly. Um, but uh, but he um, but yeah, he's often busy it as well. So that's the that's Have the deal. I seen that uh, Bear Simulator thing, by the way. The you talk the Bear Simulator, or the Goat Simulator. Bear Simulator on there's a Kickstarter going for that. Oh my God! Why is why do we need to simulate every animal? Was there a desire for animals no to be idea, simulated? But it looks because because we amazing. simulator we sim we were simulating every fucking job that you could do. So <laughs> now now it's time for animals. Now it's, it's like, time for animals. It, it's like it's like with the shooters back in the day. We had World War Two sh shooters all over the place, and now they're all modern modern day shooters. I was about to say <laughs> that we're gonna have an amoeba simulator, and then I realized that we did have one. And it was called Spore. Too bad it was only half finished. Hey, oh, shots fired. Oh, um, shit. It's true, though. That's the sad thing. All right. Um, I got to get back into playing this game where people can be like, what are we doing here? Um, yeah, and I'm jumping out of here. All right. Thanks, thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Try not to wince too much when I mispronounce German, man. I'm trying to give it the accent because I feel like it's only yeah, right. Yeah, I'm but... cool. I'm cool with that. <laughs> Just need to shout and then you'll say it properly. Really? Uh, really? Shout like in all caps? Really? Uh, How could you say that with it right here? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for the uh, help, Seb. I appreciate it, man. No problem. All right, dude. I'll catch you, you later on. Everyone follow Seb if you're not already doing it. Everyone follow him. Actually, can one of my mods throw a okay. link to Seb in chat, please? Because um, he is an awesome dude. And go see him when he DJs in Berlin next time. And make fun of him <laughs> for not having a driver's license. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, I'll I catch you later. Dude. soon. Sometime. Sometime. All right, bye, dude. I'll talk to you later. See ya. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, let's see. So, yeah. Sorry, Viz. So I'll chat in between things, but I'm going to be reading uh, here, you know, reading the stuff. Oh, no, I'll be chilling on. anyway. I mean, I won't say that much. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Oh, but first, before I do that, though, so you don't have to tell me if, if it's, like, embarrassing or something, but how did this happen exactly that you, I mean... Oh, well, I, yeah, I don't really want to talk okay, about okay, it. Okay, okay, that's fine. Uh, that's it's fine. kind of stupid. Are, are you fine, though? I mean, are you going to be fine? Like, are they... Well, I just came back from the hospital, and I should be fine. Like, it's just my, both of my hands are wrapped in bandages at the moment, and I can't really type. But, yeah, no, uh, no, but I'm just saying, but, you're, right. but they will be okay? Like, they're going to heal? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it right. should be all right in a bit. Okay, God, man. Well, everyone give Viz some love, guys. 
This is what happens when when things that you don't want to talk about happen. <laughs> All <right>. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Um, blah, 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 blah. Yes. Okay. Uh, what brings you to uh, Gusenthbrunnen? I hope I did that right. Stranger. Charisma. Pulling out the charisma. I'm visiting from the Rhine. Ru oh, wait. I got to disguise my voice. <clears throat> I'm visiting from the Rhine Ruhr Megaplex, and my friend Hans said the market here is second to none. I had to come see for myself. The older man smiles sadly. Well, maybe a few years ago that was true. These days, well, it's hard times all around, I suppose. But you're welcome to go on in, of course. Customers are always welcome. Oh yeah, Dat Charisma. What's up, Zamaria? How you doing, man? Hello, duty. Oh, and talk to Quorn if you want to hear some good stories about the market back in its prime. He's always happy to share a tale or two. Older man steps aside. Watch your step on the ladder there. Some of the steps get slippery when it's cold. <laughs> I, I am obviously not going to ask him, Hey, have you heard anything about a gang hiding out around here? Thanks. That's all we do there. Man, I am parched. It's too bad, man. I'll see what I can do after I coat your gang with blood. No, I'm just kidding. Just making that up. Oh, shit. Shots fired. Actually, shots not fired yet. The whole idea is to hopefully avoid the shots being fired. In case anyone's wondering why I'm being so careful about this stuff, it's because the guy said that uh, he doesn't want me to spook them so that they destroy the merchandise, so I can't just go in guns blazing. So, instead I'm taking it more more nice, like, oh, we got the guy, like, kneeling on the rug. That's a good sign. It's like Bane. Look at that, it's totally Bane on the rug. Oh my god, he's going to throw a guy in a sewer. That's what's happening next. Um, let's see. Got a dancer down here. All right, let's you find out what's going on. You merely adopted the RPGs, are. What's that say again? You merely adopted the RPGs. Mm-hmm. He was born in it. <laughs> that's I right. can't do the voice, so yeah. He was born, that, 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 I like it, though. That's good. Uh, let's see. Still getting an R, still moving ahead. Cool, Zamaria. That's awesome, man. The me Don't forget, Zamaria. Keep, keep hitting some people up, for because uh, you're going to find there's a lot of talented artists that hang out around here. The man before you is of average build in a nondescript dress. He's leaning against the old wooden cabinet reading a book. As you approach, he looks up and casts a warm smile in your direction. Guten Tag. The name's Corin, friend. Can't say I've seen you around these parts before. Just passing through, or... Let's see. What can you tell me about this place? Gussentbrunnen. Well, it's my home, for one. Now, we've got a small bar set up over there. But of course, you'll want to know about the market. It used to be something to behold, my friend. One of the grandest markets in the city. You could find nearly anything in these stalls for the right price. It's a real shame, but little by little, things slow down. Folks stop taking the subway line so much. But I guess that's the way of the flux, in before this becomes the plot to cars. Uh, let's see. Looking for information. Ever heard of a gang called the Ravengeister? Well, certainly. They've been spinning quite a tale in these parts of late. Hard to know anything for sure, though. One rumor says they hijacked freight out of Frankfurter Tor, and the next day you heard about a sighting down in Alexanderplatz. Hell, just yesterday I heard someone claim they saw a member of the Rabengeister speed by in the U-Bahn tunnel clinging to the side of a train car. Ha! <laughs> he leans closely. Between you and me... See ya, Penguins fan. Thanks for stopping by, dude. Oh, I understand, Zamaria. You gotta do that, though. Uh, let's see. Between you and me, that's probably a gang called Surfer Turf. Strange ones, those. I heard they implant suction cups to their hands and feet. What? I guess they really like hitching rides on the U-Bahn trains. That's... Okay, so in the in the dystopic future, in the dystopic world of Shadowrun future, what we are going to do when we can get implants is not do awesome data jacks in our head. We're not going to, you know, put chrome arms on our body. Some of us are going to implant suction cups on our hands and feet. Because as we know... For anyone who's ever tried to attach a radar detector or a cell phone to a car window, suction cups are tremendously effective. And by tremendously, I mean not at all. Uh, even a little bit. Um, okay. He shakes his head with amusement. Yeah, if you guys have que if you guys have things you want to ask Viz, by the way, um, Viz is going to be hanging out a little bit with us in Skype um, because he just is uh, not in really a position to be doing a lot of typing at the moment. So, um, but during the time that I'm doing like readings and stuff, he's obviously going to have to be quieter because, you know, but yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to talk too much, so yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to interrupt. So. No, no, not at all, man. Not at all. I'm just sorry that it's going to sound like I'm being super talky, but, you know, I guess... Oh, I'm... no, no. <laughs> it's all good, man. Uh, let's see. That's the flux state for you, though. Full of the strange and unexpected. 
Have you seen a shipment of weapons pass through here recently? His face falls. Wish that I had, friend. Its place used to be soaring with commerce. But now, now hardly anything passes through here, I'm afraid. Folks around here are lucky enough to have a full meal at the end of the day. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry to hear that. I hope things turn around for the better soon. Yeah, me too. Thanks for the friendly words, though. Most folks that come through here are either looking to bum a quick handout or steal what they can before disappearing down the line. Can I do anything to help? No, I don't think so, friend. But I thank you for the gesture. The man squints at you. He looks thoughtful. Say, have you ever heard the story of Schinderhans? Oh, man. Every time I get another German word, I'm like, it's like it's like a horse approaching like a jump in, in like the, uh, the Schinderhans, yeah, it's no problem. Is that Schinderhans? Is that right? Are you German, Viz? Well, no, I'm Belgian, but uh, ah. we speak three languages here. It's Dutch, French, and German. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. Okay. As a Belgian, then you'll be able to tell me. Then Seb will have to call back and be like, listen, no Belgian can tell you how to really pronounce. <laughs> 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 okay, so Schinderhans, right. Schinderhans was an outlaw centuries ago, back in the Napoleonic days. See, Schinderhans, what's up, 1298? Uh, that's my, that's my, that's my disguise. D but no, Thorg, that's my disguise. That, that's, that's to make it seem as if I'm, uh, that, that's that my, my accent. My cunning, secret, deep cover accent. <laughs> and I get it so bad. <laughs> oh, man. Schinderhans was an outlaw centuries ago, back in the Napoleonic days. See, Schinderhans was thief, a greedy one if you believe the stories. He and his gang raided up and down the Rhine, stealing for themselves. But something happened. The people of the Rhinelands, they were inspired by Schinderhans. In time, they hailed him as a hero. He was stealing from the French, you see. He chuckles, then continues. What's up, Twisted? It's not German unless you shout it. <laughs> I think something happened then, something surprising, even to Schinderhans. I think because of this, perhaps, he became the hero people wanted him to be. Wow. Awesome game. Yeah, I figured that was going to be a close game. My team, uh, my Yukon Huskies, man, they're in the Elite Eight. I'm very proud of them. I think they're going to lose to Michigan State, but I'm proud of them still. Uh, maybe he did start stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. I don't know. The history books are confusing, to say the least. At any rate, the point is this, friend. I think that maybe, and if enough people believe something to be true, it can change the truth of that thing. Perhaps if enough people here in, in Gersensbrunnen have a hope to believe in, then our fate will change as well. Until then, well, we continue on. You seem like a pretty well-educated man. Why choose a life underground here in this place? Ah, fair question. Let's just say it was the best option at the time. At any rate, this is my home now, and I won't abandon it simply because it's grown somewhat older and poorer. Now, is there anything else I can help you with? Nope, I'll be going. <sighs> Thank you for the info. So far, I feel like my cover is working absolutely perfectly. No one even suspects. Thanks to my vaguely Russian slash German accent. See, even this guy, who's obviously Bane. See, he's not doing anything. Yeah, pretty much what Viz is saying is pretty much why America is embarrass embarrasses itself daily in terms of how little language we know. I, I know a little French. I had French in high school. My mother was fluent in French, had a degree in French, lived in France. So I know a little French. And then a pathetic, pitiful amount of Italian, by which I mean like with a dictionary. And that's it. And comparatively, I'm better than a lot of Americans who know like English and English and English. And arguably not even that very well. So our understanding of languages is just not, not getting the job done. Okay, what's up, goldfish? things about Belgium that we know four languages at least I mean that no I'm, I'm like, like like I said I'm extremely impressed with that we should be learning more languages like we absolutely should um, I think it's important I think America would be frankly a lot less uh, how do I put this America centric if it actually had to learn someone else's language for a change so you know I, I, I admire very much your ability to speak different languages my father was a translator so, um, I had, you know, that was one of the big things was translating poetry. Um, and uh, so he always had a lot to say about the importance of knowing different languages as well. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, just to get that in there, we also get uh, an option when we're 12 years old to learn uh, classical languages, Latin and Greek, uh, ancient Greek. So I did that as well. So uh, we can talk some Latin or Greek if you want to. Oh, dear God, man. So frightening. See? So now chat's in big trouble. 
All right, chat, bring up the Latin. Let's 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 hear the ancient Greek. Where is it? <laughs> I want to see it, ancient Latin. It's mainly though, like po poems you got to translate and stuff like that. But yeah. No, for sure. But still, though, that's amazing. Well, and obviously that helped with other languages, right? I mean, you know, especially Latin would have for the Romance languages. It, it makes it easier to understand other languages, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Fluent in trumpet. Yeah, I play trumpet too, Massive. That I can do. I, 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 do, I am a musician, so I'm comfortable with that, at least. Okay, goldfish, not to be confused with swordfish. Is she wearing a fox? I think it's a fox. The woman starts a little at your approach, but she recovers quickly and beams brightly at you. Ah, fox, yes. The fox face on her headdress seems to grin as well. Her classically nasal American accent is obvious. Hey, kiddo, share a drink with me? Uh, let's see. Sure, if you're buying. Awesome! Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of options here. They've got beer, a homebrewed gin, and schnapps. Pick your poison. I've been drinking gin and tonics. The tonic cuts out some of the gas flavor. I think they've been distilling in old propane tanks. Ugh. I'll have some schnapps. Sure thing, guy. He slides a tumbler full of sweet-smelling pear schnapps down your way. It's warm. So, what's a girl like you doing in a place like this? I'm just traveling through. I heard there was a market, but... Well, just look at this place. She waves her arm around in a wide circle, taking everything in from the sadly shimmying woman to the near-empty corridors outside. So, I'm just having a drink with this fine gentleman here and then moving on. Where are you from? California Free States, doing the whole Europe tour thing, you know? Besides getting me out of that hellhole, it's been a real good learning experience. Had some good fun, made some good friends. Yeah, I'm sure you're hanging out in a hostel, lady. I'm sure it's exactly what's going on. She clatters the ice around in her drink. You can smell the cheap gin from where you stand. But it's a hellhole everywhere these days. Can't drink enough to forget some things I've seen. I'm all for communism and anarchy and free love. But sometimes the F-state goes a little far. Uh, let's see. How do you mean? It's just the things like the turf wars and the racists and junk. You know, like those humanist assholes? Unpleasant. But that shit aside, I like the idea of a state without the man. Now listen, my name's Goldfish. What's yours? Where'd you get the name like Goldfish? Oh, you know the saying, memory like a goldfish? Because I'm blonde, people think I'm like that. Maybe it's because you wear a fox on your head, lady. Plus, they call my twin Guppy, so goldfish made sense for me. So what were you hoping to find down here? Robin Hood? <laughs> Some stolen goods. Oh, man, that bites. I can see why you might come good looking here, though. It seems like a place where Robin Hood might bring stuff to the poor. <laughs> Not to say you're rich, but if that's who's got your stuff, this is as far away from medieval England as you're going to get. Wait a minute, that's the second reference to Robin Hood we got. The first guy was basically talking about Robin Hood also. What are these people? Raven Geister. Okay, Viz, you're my translator. Is Raven Geister mean like Robin Hood? Is that basically what that means? Um, I have no idea about that exactly. The, the literal translation would be like Raven Ghost. Raven Ghost. Okay. Damn it, I thought I was onto something. Well, both of these people have been telling me about Robin Hood, so there's some Robin Hood connection there that's going on. And I don't know, Stalin, why the woman's dancing like the Asari from ME, but it's very distracting. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. Though, if you're looking for ghosts, this seems like a fine place for it. Seems like everyone and everything down here is a ghost. Ghost of the past, ghost trains, ghostly thin folks pale for lack of sunlight. I need sunlight, too. I like to joke I photosynthesize, but it just gives me so much energy. Energy these people don't have anymore. Her expression goes stern for a moment as she stares into her empty gin and tonic. Maybe I've been down here long enough. Maybe I'm a ghost, too. All right, that's it, Fraulein. You're officially cut off. Your total is 36 new yen. Can I at least buy something for my friend here? He's been talking with me a bit and hasn't had anything. No, you're cut off. I don't want you even sipping out of it. Dude, chill. Forget I asked. She turns to you with a shrug. I'm sorry I couldn't get you anything else, but thanks for being a pal. Okay, I got cold one. What is that? A synthetic winter ale brewed by Aztecnology. Okay. Interesting. All right, goldfish. I actually did a little bit of programming in basic back in the day. Let's see. Goldfish is warm. Blah, 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 blah. I just, for Div there, our school days, like in high school, are from 8 in the morning till 16, like 4 in the afternoon. And sometimes it's still five in the afternoon, but that's only like two uh, two days in a week. 
Oh yeah, it's it's usually like eight hours, but some days it's nine hours. Most impressive. That's only if you choose to go for that route, though. You don't have to. No, no. There's there's a shit ton of different kind of things you can do, like school-wise. Interesting. I am not sure how the U.S. system is, but uh, in Belgium, at least, you can go like BSO is like the um, I don't know. Mm, that's kind of for like the special education. Okay. <laughs> I I don't really. Yeah, it's not a good way to put it, but you know what I mean. Right? Are you talking like Are you talking like technical, or are you talking no no for the, people that's with different TSO. learning? Okay, TSO so like learning technical. disabilities or things like that. Um, yeah, that, okay. that's BSO. Gotcha. The FTSO was a technical thing, which is like uh, the first four <laughs> years is like you know normal studying, and then after that you go like uh, you work two or three days a week, and then you study the rest of the week. Starting at what and what age are we talking about? Like, is that um? Uh, that's twelve to eighteen. Okay, so that basically encompasses our junior high and high school in the states. Um, so seven, which is basically grades seven through twelve for us, um, is junior high and high school is basically those ages. And after high school, right. it's it's college. So, our our system is like six to twelve and then twelve to eighteen. Okay. Interesting, huh? We have the whole. Uh, you have to go to school until you're eighteen. Uh, y well, no, um, depending on the state. In most places, um, you're able to drop out of school at the age of, I believe, it's 16. Um, but, um, yeah, so that's that's the way it, you, you, you have to go to school. It's compulsory right. until 16, although there's some changes depending on the state that you're in. Well, here it's pretty much till 18. Good. Well, it's what it should be elsewhere, but the reason that people drop out oftentimes is for financial reasons because they have to go try to work to support a family and stuff so it's but it's so I never blame the person who's doing it I just think it's it's something which uh, that it uh, you the US should not accept it I mean it should be we should be working on comprehensive solutions so that people don't have to do that um, yeah that but, whole system seems kind of if you don't mind me saying but it seems kind of fucked up yeah it's it, it's problematic it's definitely problematic I, here I taught you in it pretty so. much get paid to go to school oh really <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely it's a system that's in flux quite a bit. Um, there's some very good aspects of it, but a lot of it is um, is problematic, and it's it's been taken over by an obsession with testing and standards and data and numbers and things that basically give you a chance to blame teachers and let business people call the shots, which, quite frankly, is not what you want in education. So yeah, I see. Yeah. Uh, what's going on? Odd merchant. Odd, okay. Hello there, newcomer. I have many exciting and rare weapons for you to prove. Instrument of death of the thought you'll not find anywhere else in Berlin. Gotta take a look around? Despite the shopkeeper's claims, her inventory looks decidedly poor. Most of these weapons appear rusty and in ill repair. A particularly cobbled together pistol stands out from the bunch. Sure, let's see what you have. Certainly, sir. Step right this way. Slap dash pistol. Wow. It's a pretty badass pistol. Unfortunately, it doesn't do me any good, so. See anything you like? What's up with the shoddy looking pistol? Exquisite, is it not? The work of a master craftsman who used to live here. Forge some of the furthest slug throwers you'll find this side of the Atlantic. And at that price, a steal! Looks like a piece of junk. A discerning customer you are. Well, I have many more traditional weapons for a man of your taste. I don't know. It doesn't seem like there's much there would interest me. Well, it's been lean pickings lately around these parts. And on top of that, there's the militia. They need most of the best pieces to help keep us safe. Still, I've got some reliable weapons for home defense. Okay. I did that. I'll be going now, thanks. All right. Have a good day. <laughs> yeah. Well, it said odd, so I just immediately started thinking about Jerry Lewis. I don't know what told me. What's up, shopkeeper? Hi there, stranger. I got a sale on today. You interested in some rations, salvage, some home remedies? Let's see. Just looking for information. Ever heard of a gang called the Robin Geister? The troll's eyes flicker back and forth. 
No, no, can't say that I have. Uh huh. Seen a shipment of weapons pass through here recently? I I don't know anything about weapons. I I just smell spell sell scraps of salvage and home remedies. Uh huh. Thanks for your time. Weapons? What are weapons? Never heard of these things. When, when you say weapons, I realize that I completely forgot to get any um, summoning fetishes, which is kind of a problem because that's what I do. So that was really dumb. So I'll get one of these, even though... Oh well. See you around, obvious suspicious gang member. The crate appears to have been pried hastily open. There's a partially torn shipping label on its side. Most of the ink is worn off, but the word Kreuz Bazaar is still clearly visible. Okay, yeah, so obviously, this guy bought it from the bad... from the gang. It's obvious. Uh, hello, uh, welcome back, sir. What can I do for you? There's a crate behind your shop that looks like it was marked for delivery to the Kreuz Bazaar. You wouldn't have. Oh, I keep forgetting I'm supposed to be in character. <clears throat> There's a crate behind your shop that looks like it was marked for delivery to the Kreuz Bazaar. You wouldn't happen to know about that, would you? The troll looks around nervously. No, I don't know anything about crates. Looking for some backup is just a here, friend. Uh, okay, look. Yeah, the Ravengeister came by yesterday, asked me to move the rest of these medical supplies, then they disappeared. I don't know where they went. I mean, hey, I gotta make a living, right? Look around here. If they leave me this kind of score, I'm grateful. Already sold most of it in less than a day. Plenty of folks around here in need of real medical supplies. Alright, I've told you what I know, so we're cool, right? I don't know anything else. Yeah, check out my etiquette. Obvious gang ties is obvious. And here I go, etiquette gang, which I just picked up. Now I'm gonna drop the voice. <clears throat> I know how this works, friend. They drop off the shipment, you move the goods, and you meet somewhere to hand over the take. Tell me where to find the Revengaster. Where is he? Swear to me! Okay. Posinti <laughs> Revengaster, <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay, okay, fine. I meet them at the information kiosk on the far side of the market. That's where they appear. I don't know how they get there, though. I swear. They don't use the front entrance. I know that much. Thanks. You know, those supplies were stolen from another keys. My keys. That means all that money you've been making belongs to me. He takes a step back, managing to appear small despite his hulking troll frame. Okay, okay, fine. Here's the money. Just take it and leave me alone. Aw, oh, yeah. 400 new yen. That's what money happens. Money in the bank, y'all. Money in the bank. Money in the bank and money in my mind. Next time, don't take stolen goods from a gang member. It's bad for your health. <clears throat> Oh, good, all right, so she goes away. My disguise voice is perfect. Thank you, Griff. Arizona, is Arizona still leading? What's uh, what's going on with the score? Oh, we got a little March Madness update on my phone. Oh, they're in overtime. Oh, wow. Wisconsin up 61-59. Hold on just a second, guys. I'm just popping this up to look. Cool. Alright. Huzzah. Twitch seems to have really gotten their um, <clears throat> shit together. It seems like it, although I still don't know what's going on with the, uh, with the chat delay. In fact, let me, uh, check that. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. W when you guys hear this, please type in the word king when you guys in chat hear this. And I'm going to count now. Sixteen seconds. All right. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, they're getting there. They're getting there. Sixteen seconds. Very nice. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot, Div. You're all heart. Okay. Alrighty. Information kiosk. Let me save this and find out what's going with these guys. 
Militia captain. All right, what's up? The militia captain stands at alert, her eyes tracking slowly across the market before coming to rest in you. Guten Tag. I'm looking for a gang called the Reibengeister. Ever heard of them? No. She frowns slightly. But I wouldn't suggest asking questions about such things around here. Really? You're all heart. Here, I'm asking another question. Look like you keep a close eye on this Kiaz. Have you seen a shipment of weapons pass through here recently? No. I would have noticed that. It's true, Zamari. It's true. They are definitely, uh, as Viz say, as they're trying to make some uh, changes, I think. so. Alright, I'm going to investigate some things around here. You notice a set of scuff marks on the ground as if something heavy was dragged across here. The marks vanish into the wall. You find a small seam in the wall that suggests there might be a passageway hidden in the wall here, but you can spot no clear mechanism for opening it. Maybe we should ask around. This looks like the place, so I'm sure somebody might spill the beans. Okay, I know how to get through there, but we're going to look at this first. Air is in extreme disrepair. Water is flooding out of the walls and stagnating in pools in the tile floor. You can smell the mildew from here. Okay. Okay, so we're going to save. This appears to be an old U-Bahn information terminal. I need more shouting on the German. <laughs> Will do. What's up, Razorblade? Good to see you, man. Uh, judging by the system design and current condition, it is quite old. As you approach, the machine makes a series of sputtering sounds as the dust-covered screen flickers dimly to light. Time since last update, 5207-110522. Error, primary database not found. Restarting in offline mode, restarting. The screen goes dark as the machine begins to emit a bizarre variety of clicking and chirping sounds. After an interminable amount of time, the screen finally shutters back to life. Welcome to Gissenbrunn Station. Please select an option for the menu below. Data corrupted, data corrupted. Uh, three, station history. Four, root information, data corrupted. Enter custom query. Let's start with three. You have selected station history. Gissenbrunn Station opened on April 18, 1930 as the final stop along the U-Bahn's U-8 line. It was designed by prominent U-Bahn architect Alfred Grenadier. Construction on the U-8 line began in 1914 under Algemeine, oh god, Geselschaft, but labor shortages in the First World War put the project on hold for over a decade. Um, the eventual completion and opening of this home line between Nukelin and Gusenbrunn in 1930 represented a major step forward in connecting Berlin's working class districts to the city center. Yeah, I've seen it, but I haven't read it, Razor. I've had no time. I've been doing work all day, man. Next couple of days, I'll get a chance to look at it, but I will at some point. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> you just barge in for a sec? Sure, yeah. Like the A with a, the double point above it? Yeah. It's like an E. It's like Elektricitätsgesellschaft. Schirrschaft? Elektricitätsgesellschaft. Okay, I'll try to remember that. So the E with the double dot. It's like an E. You could just pronounce it as an E. It oh, okay, I'm sorry. Right. The A with the double dot. A or an O with the double dot? The A with the double dot is an E. Like okay. As in, okay, E as in E, or E as in E? Uh, E. e as Usually. In e. Fucking German, man. <laughs> it's annoying. Okay. All right. That's that's good to know, though. Um, that word would be like electricität. Electricität. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. During oh, World War God. II. Gentlemen, what's up, gentlemen? During World War II, many unfinished tunnels and stations along the U-8 line were converted into air raid shelters, including parts of Gussenbrunn Station. In the decades following the war, the station also served as an emergency fallout shelter in the event of a nuclear attack. During the Cold War, the U-8 line continued to run between Nukelin and Gussenbrunn, taking it under the wall and through parts of East Berlin. The train would skip all East Berlin stations until it emerged on the far side near Gussenbrunn. Okay. Today, the U-8 line continues to operate, carrying thousands of passengers through Grayson Brunnen Station on a daily basis. In addition, the former bunker at this location has been transformed into a popular museum exhibit, showcasing the history and development of Berlin's underworld. Please inquire at the information kiosk for current museum rates and hours of admittance. All right. So that's that. Root information. You start to press the 4 key, only to realize the key is missing from the keyboard. A thick layer of grime and dust rests in its place. Okay. And then 6, custom query. Um... All right, how about Robin Hood? How 
about I spell it right? Oh, we tried doing it all one one word. Because everyone keeps talking about Robin Hood. Let's see. No. Sherwood Forest? Little John? <laughs> Maid Marian? Maid Marian. Actually I think it's uh I think it's John with a without an H. Why do I have this sudden urge to watch um it's called the the parody of the Robin Hood movie? Men in Tights. Oh yes. That <laughs> one. Because I actually have because I am British, whatever that line is. Because we're men. We're men in tights. Uh, 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 heights. All right, 24 seconds left. Arizona drives down the lane. Nope. Kicks back out. Resets. Three timeouts for Wisconsin. No timeouts for Arizona. Dribbles the goal. Top of the key. Drives in. Takes the long jumper. Off the back rim. Wisconsin with a rebound. Gets it back. Arizona waits. Seven seconds left. Resets. Drives in. Drives all the way in. The floater. Doesn't get it. Wisconsin. I don't know what just happened. Why did this stuff stop? There was a foul. I think there was a foul. Was there a foul? The coach of Arizona is extremely upset. <clears throat> this is very difficult to do when I'm looking down at a screen with no sound and I'm simultaneously listening to Shadowrun music. The Arizona fans stand stunned. Oh, he called an offensive foul. Oh, an offensive foul in Arizona. Wow. Let him play, man. I'm not a I'm not a huge Arizona fan, but let him play. You can't call that. Oh yeah, how'd it go, gentlemen? That's not an offensive foul, I'm sorry. Just let him play. Arizona, for the record, is in big trouble. Which is good because that's the uh, the guy who's chasing me in my bracket. Um is uh, I got screwed because I lost Louisville, which was my champion. But I still have Michigan State, which I have in the Final Four. I still have Florida, um, which I have getting to the Final Four. And the other guy has basically already lost everybody except Michigan, and um, and uh, they had Wisconsin. They had he had Arizona winning this. So ah, uh, come on, gamer, he didn't push that. You don't make that call with five seconds left. He didn't really push off. I didn't really see that as a push off. I mean, I'd have to look at it again, because granted, I'm looking at my phone screen, so I didn't see it very closely. And by the way, I'm kind of hoping Wisconsin wins this game. I have a lot of friends in Wisconsin, so... Oh! Oh! What do we have here? Arizona? Did Arizona get the ball back? Is it Arizona ball? Oh, they're going over the monitor to check. See what happened. Oh, Arizona. Oh, I think that's off Arizona. I think it's off Arizona, but it might have gotten off the Wisconsin player's fingers as well. So ball's bounced out here. He goes like this. I think that's off Arizona. <laughs> Sports talk. Just, just for another three seconds, gentlemen, before this game ends slight interruption i i will need to have some american explain this to me sometime i need to watch a game with an american because i have no idea i mean this whole football thing like i know people get psyched up about it and i just have no idea what the fuck is going on well actually what we're watching right now is basketball but um but but yes uh oh uh, basketball okay I yeah yeah no this is this is basketball that we're actually watching yeah I'm in character even watching a basketball game. <laughs> uh, I'm actually watching uh, March Madness, the March Madness app on my uh, Galaxy Note 2 Dragon Spear, which has got a pretty big screen, but still I'm like looking down um, as I'm doing this. So it bounces off here and then it's off. See, the problem is it has to be indisputable video evidence and they ruled it as Wisconsin's ball. I think this is going to go to Wisconsin. 
This is the second time in as many days as they've had a major review, and whoever gets the ball is going to have a massive difference in the way the game plays out. So... Pretty great game. Do you know that the winner of this game, the each of these coaches, um, each of these coaches has never been to the Final Four. Arizona coach and the Wisconsin coach, neither one has ever been to the Final Four. Oh, here we go. Now, this is the part where, where the, the basketball people are desperately trying to get um, things to kind of keep people interested. So they pop, they keep popping up like what officials may review and like, you know, different things they can do. <laughs> Dragon, that's funny. Oh, let me go. Let's see. Let's see. Whoa, whoa. Let's see. Wisconsin. Let's see. Wisconsin. It's there. It's still there. And then I think that last touch is from the Arizona player. I think this is going to stay with Wisconsin. Yeah, exactly. This is where they're like, quick, show the one from the ground. I'm, I'm telling you, five years from now, we're going to have the basketball cam. It's going to be from the basketball. The perspective of the basketball. That's going to happen next. Okay, so the refs are walking away from the from the table. Taking a long time on this. I don't think you can overrule this. I don't see how. Okay, the refs are now talking, or as some people call them, the zebras. Are sitting in the middle of the floor, standing in the middle of the floor talking. Right now they're like, okay, where do we go after this? Well, I was thinking of hitting up the Olive Garden. Yeah, you want to go to the OG? Yeah. Yeah, let's go there. All right, sounds good. I got to shower at the hotel first, though. Okay, that's fine. We'll save you, sweet. That's what they're talking about, not the game. Man, they're going back to the monitor again. And they keep sending a referee over to tell the players to go away from the monitor. crazy. Arizona, then the Wisconsin player touches it, but then the Arizona player I think it's I think it's going to be Wisconsin ball. What's up, Parker? Some people do call them that gamer, it's true. They do need higher def cams. I don't know why that it's not that. It's really crazy. Although in fairness, I mean, I was going to say in fairness, it's hard for them to capture the motion, but it really isn't. Like they have cameras that can do that. I know it's the longest two seconds because they've spent like the last five minutes over at the monitor. Look at the same replay. So now they're like, okay. Like, I don't understand why you need to look at it a second time. Okay, well, now that we've looked at it a second time, after we looked at it a first time. I mean, to me, it's pretty simple. If you ruled it one way, you got to keep it that way. They should really have like... Um what's called finality of judgment in the rules. Oh, they called... Yeah, they should. They called it the other way. They reversed it. Arizona ball. Wow. Is it Arizona ball? I can't tell. This is what happens when I watch without a uh, volume. I think it's Arizona ball. Yep, it's Arizona ball with 2.3 seconds left. I can't believe that. I can't believe that. that. I don't agree with that at all. I don't see how you have enough to be able to do it. All right, here we go. 2.3 seconds left. Arizona with no timeouts left. They got to inbound the ball. They get it over to him. He gets the shot. 0.5. It's up. It does not get the ball off in time. He misses it anyway. Wisconsin wins. It is going to the final four for the first time in Bo Ryan's history. The Wildcats go home disappointed. Wisconsin goes on. The big cheese rolls forward. Victory yeah. for the Wisconsin Badgers. The Badgers win. Final four. Congratulations, the game. Badgers, really? That's their name? Wisconsin Badgers. Yeah, you don't want to mess with the Badgers, man. Oh, she. And more importantly, uh, it also means that the guy who's chased me in his bracket is completely screwed because he had Arizona winning that. So, yeah. And the Arizona fans cry. And the Wisconsin fans do not. W plus Bo equals Final Four. I still think that was a bad call. Okay. Now we can actually get away from the sports and get back to the game. Hooray. <laughs> back to the studio, yeah. <laughs> Wisconsin, yeah, I don't, I don't think, yeah, they did get a generous push-off call. I agree, 1298. I didn't agree with that call. So, all right. Small seam, blah, blah, blah. I want you to force over the wall. Oh, yeah. And just give away the scrape and a crunch, and the passage behind is revealed. Excellent. 
Let's do it up. Congratulations, game. Badger, badger, badger. Mushroom, mushroom, snake. What? Did you just say badger, 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 mushroom, mushroom, snake? Did that just happen? I want. I want to make sure. Is that is that actually uh, is that actually the fight song? Is that like the fight thing? Really? Badger, 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 mushroom, mushroom, snake. No, it's a like a flash thing. Hmm. Bo deserves this so much. I have to tell you, game, that for many years I've thought that Wisconsin basketball has set the game back 10 years. It was some of the most boring brand of basketball to watch. But this year, this team, I have to say, was a lot more enjoyable to watch than previous Wisconsin teams. I hate games that are won like 40 to 34. I mean, like, snore. But this time I was a little bit different, so. You did look it up. It is Badger, Badger, Badger. <laughs> okay, this is the same man you've been in the market, but his friendliness has gone from his place. Face, and its place is a cold and wavering gaze. Oh, it's this guy, Quarren. Quarren, really? Really? You should have stuck to the market, stranger. If the Rabengeister wished to be found, we'd open a fucking cafe. Now, what do you want of us? Say your piece. Let's see. I don't know. It looked like an invitation to me. If you really want to be found, you might want to hide your tracks a little better. Just saw you upstairs. I didn't see you on the way down. You think a gang like us have only got one secret passage? There's all kinds of fun hidden passages down here. This place is over a hundred years old, you know. During the Second War, the World War, they converted this part of the station into an air raid shelter. Made it nice and secure in case anyone spotted bombers over the city. No, 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 game. Not true, man. Not true. I'm talking about Bo Ryan, Wisconsin Ball. I watched Bo Ryan, Wisconsin Ball for about four or five years, and I found their boring, their basketball style boring, boring, boring. Now, this year was not that way, but I'm not talking about Dick Bennett. I'm talking about Bo Ryan. I, I find his style of basketball astonishingly boring. But this year, they're much more balanced, and I do like, what's his name, Kaminsky or whatever? I like that guy. And I think that they've, you know, it was a, it was a much more enjoyable team this year. And I like Wisconsin in general. As I say, I have a lot of friends in Wisconsin, so I, I'm I'm happy to root for them. I don't... Arizona? Why would I... Ugh, Arizona. So I'm happy to have Wisconsin win. I'm just telling you that up till this year, I found Wisconsin ball to be boring as all hell. But this year was different, so... Okay, Badger, Badger, Squirrel. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Continue listening. Then, during the Cold War, they designated this whole station an emergency fallout shelter. You know, in case the Russians and the Americans decided to blow each other up. This is back when Berlin was divided in two, of course. Things got better for a while after that. Hell, a few decades ago, before the awakening, I hear they used to give tours. This is the Badger, Badger, Badger song? I'm really sorry, that was really loud. <laughs> I apologize for how loud that was. Oh, gosh. <laughs> badger, 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 badger. Uh, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> uh, gosh. <laughs> in the Cold War, they designated this whole station an emergency fallout shelter. You know, in case the Russians and the Americans decided to blow each other up. This was back when Berlin was divided in two, of course. Things got better for a while after that. Hell, a few decades ago, before the Awakening, I hear they used to give tours. <laughs> this isn't a tour, I'm afraid. So, you're from the Kreutz Bazaar, and you're here to get your stolen shipment back. That about right? That's about right, yeah. Which I completely understand, stranger, believe me. But unfortunately, we need these supplies more than you do. So I'll have to graciously decline your offer to relieve us of your property. I can see things are hard around here, Quarren, but I have to look for my own keys, and that shipment belongs to us. Not from where I'm standing. Look, there's no need for bloodshed. I'll tell you what. It seems like you know what it's like to look out for keys like this. It's not easy, right? We provide for these people. A haul like that shipment gives Grisenbrunnen from going hungry just a little while longer. It's our home. These are our people. I know you feel the same about the Kreutz Bazaar. So I'm prepared to let you leave, just like that, knowing a little secret here and everything. In return, all you need to do is walk away. Just walk away and forget this ever happened. What do you think, stranger? I think in the flux, folks like us need to stick together. Why stay strangers? 
Maybe we can come to an arrangement that can benefit both of our keys. I'm listening. You return our supplies, we send you a shipment of extra rations in exchange. We agree to a truce of sorts. I see. That's an interesting offer, friend. The rations alone probably don't match the price of the weapons, but... Well, food is in short supply around here. And this alliance? What do you propose? We agree to stay out of each other's way. And maybe we find opportunities to help each other out in the future. Very well. I suppose that's worth the price of a crate of guns. Your medical supplies are already mostly gone, I'm afraid. But the weapons shipment is still being held in a locker at Frankfurt or Tor. I'll have it sent back to the Kreuz Bazaar immediately. And you'll deliver those rations? Take the tunnel to the Kreuz Bazaar and talk to Paul Amsel. He, rides in, he runs an import-export shop not far from the U-Bahn station. Tell him I sent you and he'll take care of the rest. Well, well. Maybe things are looking up around here. I suppose friends and enemies both can be found in strange ways here in the Flux. Glad we could have this talk, Quorn. I'll be going now. You can see yourself out. Take care, stranger. Yeah. Avoided bloodshed. That's what I'm all about. No blood was shed these days. Such a pacifist. Hey, man, you know, it's a tough world. Everyone's just trying to get along. Just trying to get by. Trying to get by. Hey, you want a beer? Sure, I'll take one. Thanks. Gentlemen, I modded gentlemen a couple times ago. Of course, you know, that's pretty trusting. If Paul Amsel, if I tell him to go find a guy, Paul Amsel, and Paul Amsel's a guy that I'm like, anytime you see anyone who comes in asking for you, immediately kill them. I mean, this guy has no idea what could happen here. All right, that was pretty easy peasy. That was a cool little mini side quest there. Passivism is best unless the fight gets you karma. Try reloading, nah. Oh, okay, you're talking to somebody else. Gotcha. What's up, orc guard? Hey, is that a beer from downstairs? Yeah, I brought this up for you. Keep up the good work, buddy. Thanks, you're a lifesaver. The young orc takes the beer, pops the cap off with his tusk, and takes a long swig. Ah, really hits the spot. Get so muggy down here. See you around. See? I give the guy a beer, I get a karma. That's how it works. Oh, it works every life as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. You give a guy a beer and karma immediately. That's totally what it's all about. All right, so the next thing I'm going to be doing is spirit summoning. So I need another five karma for that. Oh, really, Crip? Great. Oh, yeah. I should be mod automatically. I'm older than... Play Coder 1 on cast. Yeah, Burner, the problem is, man, that ship is sailed. I played Coder 1 a long time ago. I loved it. It was great, but... I don't... I have too many other new games I want to play. Let's get back to the Kreutz Bazaar. Now I'm about to go get some more karma and some monies. You emerge from the U-Bahn station and out into the familiar streets of the Kreutz Bazaar. The energy here is a stark contrast to the weary, slowly drowning mood of Gisenbrunnen. The Kreuzberg is an island of hope, afloat still amidst the dangerous currents of the Flux State, but it wouldn't take much for it to capsize. It's time to find Gunari and tell him the news. Oh, wow, game. That's amazing. That's really cool. I got four karma. Yes. That's really amazing game. Five karma. Oh, yeah. Okay, is that going to be enough for me to get anything? Uh, I'm one point short. Need one more point to get this... To get this higher spirit summoning.
Or actually, just not even not even that. Just to save it so I can get another etiquette. Bo Ryan is the coach of Wisconsin Gamer. Alright, guy. Give me my monies. Welcome back. You need some weapons? Some ammunition, perhaps? I took care of that business with the Raven Geister. They won't be hijacking our shipments anymore. Yes, this much I know already. The missing shipment arrived just before you did. But I barely caught a glimpse of those who delivered it. How were you able to manage that? I made an arrangement with their leader and they agreed to return the weapons. And you've accomplished all of this through diplomacy? Interesting. It is... Well, it is not what I would have done. But perhaps that is for the best. Here is your payment as promised. And should you need any new weapons, thanks to you, I have some new merchandise available. Would you like to take a look? Yes, I would like to take a look. What have you got as far as rifles are concerned? Let me see those rifles. If you're interrupting, but if you're into RPGs, then yeah, Draconian, it's pretty good. Yeah, Draconian, I'm I'm extremely impressed with this uh, with this uh, expansion, and it really is an expansion more than a DLC. Um, wow, those are some expensive rifles. Assault rifle. Yeah, I don't know. This stuff is probably not going to be that useful until I can get more stuff. So, okay, objective complete. All right, now I have to take the U-bonds. That's done. Didn't really have to use anything. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Except I do need to get. Yes, I do need to go get actual fetishes. I need to get fetishes, which I did not do last time. I will not be screwed over again. Finally for the Bo Ryan story. <laughs> That's pretty good, 1298. Yep, gotta go see Algernon. You still give me the cold shoulder ever since we had that little incident with the, uh... Me getting lost in your eyes. Happens all the time. Okay. Uh, inventory. Right. This is what I needed. I guess it's just what I need. That's what I needed. Okay, let's see. Let me get... There we go. Now, let's see. Let's get rid of that. One of these. And in exchange, I will take this. And I will take that. That's much better. Okay. Alright, good. Good stuff. Maybe if she were a dark elf, Arvia. Is it hidden? Is it safe? Is, that, is it secret, right? Is it secret? Is it As a secret is safe. My bad. It's all right. I'll allow you to remain in the Skype call despite your botching of it. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you. Thank you, base Arv. <laughs> Tipping the dancer. This is the right thing to do. Oh, all I'm right. not being too interrupty. No, no, not at all, dude. I'm sorry that I'm uh, I'm not being very chatty with you specifically, but I'm. Oh no, it's all good, man. Gamecast. I'm, I'm watching the stream as well, so it's all good. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. So this is going to be... I'm going to delete that. I wish they would give you an option in the save to be able to delete it also. I mean, I guess I understand why that could be frustrating, but... Uh, I don't know. Let's delete that. Let's... that. OK. 
Okay. We're going to save. We put that there. Overwrite. Confirm. Cool. All right. What's up, Plist? Uh, acid Bolt level 3. I can't use Acid Bolt level 3, um, Plist. I'm pretty sure. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go back and double check just in case, but I don't think so. I think you need to have a higher conjuring to do that. Because right now I have... Let me actually double check and see what I've got for my conjuring. I've got... Or whatever it is. It may not be conjuring. Whatever it is. Casting. I have three conjuring. Spell casting. I've only got... I mean, I guess I could drop a point on spell casting. Alright, let me go see what he requires. Just to be on the safe side. Because he's right down here, so... Let me just double check. That, that, that seems so weird. You saying that you would drop a point in spell casting? Hmm. Well, it's like it, it depends on because the acid bolt I do use quite a bit. So, and I just switched. I just expanded it from uh, level one to level two. But yeah, see, that's the thing. It requires conjuring five. Man, conjuring five. I think I've only got conjuring four. And I don't know that I want to spend four points. See, because one of the things is, if you try to be a jack-of-all-trades in this game, you will get screwed. You've got to specialize. So I'm specializing as a charismatic um, shaman who summons spirits and controls them. Yeah, see, I've only, got, I've only got three conjuring. That would cost me nine points, and I can't even get up to what I need. So, yeah. Sadly, no. We're going to have to stick with level two acid bolt. <laughs> this isn't even my final bolt. Oh, man. I was saying the other day, I was uh, catching Gentleman on a stream. And by the way, you guys should follow Gentleman. He's, uh, he's a funny guy. But um, I was watching the other day, and uh, we were talking about that, that that this isn't even my final form. That's just always funny. Like, I can't remember a time that that's not funny. It's just always hilarious. I don't know. This isn't even my final form. You're just mad because I, I left. I leveled up on him. So. God, you and Chad just reminded me to watch, like, the abridged version of DBZ again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that stuff is fucking hilarious. If, if you guys not seen that, check out YouTube, the abridged version of DBZ. Holy crap. That's funny. Okay. Let's do my final food. Okay. Alrighty, good. Alright, let's do it. AG Chemi Europa Facility. All right. Glory, I'm sorry, but you suck. So, I'm definitely taking Iger because automatically. I have to take Blitz because he's a Decker. And here we go. Now, see, here we go back to this, this discussion, this battle. I'm just not taking Glory again. She just, she's just, she just sucks. She's just not good enough combat-wise. If I could upgrade her weapons, I would, but I just... So, even though technically, technically the best, the best combination, honestly, would be, uh... My guy, who's a shaman. Iger, who's like a combat specialist sniper. She's badass. Blitz, who's a decker. He's not bad with a gun either. He's awesome. So then, technically, Dietrich is a bro, but like Dietrich is doubling my abilities in some ways. Although he's more... He doesn't do the summoning thing to the same degree. So he is useful because of his three reduction damage. So technically, it should be Glory. She just sucks in combat. So it's going to be Dietrich. Be ready to fight in this mission. What's up, G-Man? All right, Crip. I'm ready to fight. Long haul fighting. All right. All right. I will be ready to fight. MKV-1. Monolithic. Plastic. Sterile. The Berlin office of AG Chemi Europa is all these things and more. The worst qualities of modern corporate culture all mixed into a toxic stew and sluiced into a single prefab office building. Thankfully, you shouldn't have to stay long. According to the intel that your client provided, this should be a simple smash-and-grab operation. Of course it is. Because these things are always simple, right? Of course it is. And I've been given the tools to carry it out with a minimum of fuss, right? The little black box, which obviously is like the bomb that blows up in my face or the one that brings the rain of uh, terror down upon me or something. <laughs> the MKV-1 prototype. feel the sarcasm. You know what I'm saying? Like, just come on now. The MKV-1 prototype, whatever it is, is waiting for you on the 25th floor. It's time to go and get it. Dietrich can also throw a mean impromptu punk concert. That's that's true. That's true. Okay, first of all, advanced med kit. 
Uh, I've already got a grenade. So I want you to have lots of healing. And a third weapon slot, which you can't do anything with because you're not allowed to upgrade their weapons, which, what the hell. Okay, Blitz. We're going to give you a basic med kit, and we're going to give you a frag grenade. Dietrich. Oh, Dietrich. Let's see. Wait, what? 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 If you equip this item, you will no longer meet the prerequisites of the following items, which will be unequipped. The hell? Why? I'm giving it to him. Why would that matter? Okay. I guess I can't have one of my party members. That's ridiculous. Why? Okay. So I guess one of my party members can't use... Um... I guess my party members can't use a Force Elemental, like a Force 1 Earth Elemental Fetish, because somehow that will undercut... That doesn't make any sense. Why would him having it have anything to do with me having one? That's really weird. You have four fights and one in this mission? Oh, great. <laughs> right, it's like noir. It was a smash and grab job given to us by a suspicious woman in the last day before my retirement. It was a milk run right before I went home to propose to my wife. <laughs> Alright, let's do it up. Let's get too old for this shit. Let's get too old for this shit. You have karma available to improve your character's attributes and skills. I didn't realize. Yes, I did. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Check this out. You guys want to know who this is? This, ladies and gentlemen, is the drone. Because my boy Blitz has got a corporate drone that he stole, and it's now working for us. Oh, yeah. I hope, now that I've made that really impressive sounding introduction, I really hope that it works. Ooh, cool music. Crates have been sealed. The only visible markings are Project Atlas. Oh, very nice, very nice. Send this item to my stash. And before all hell breaks loose. Yeah, I because because my, I need a Decker, so... But Blitz is pretty cool. After a few moments of sifting through cables, you find a diagnostic connector with the right input to fit the little black box that Herr Schmidt gave you. Plug in, get ready for all held regulars. Connector slips the box to the satisfying click. Tiny red light set to the box's lid begins flashing. After a few seconds, it turns solid yellow and finally shifts to green. At that instant, all the lights in the garage turn off. A few seconds later, the emergency lighting kicks in. If what Schmidt told you was true, you've just killed the main power for most of the building. In theory, the box has also circumvented the security cameras on the building's upper floors. You should be able to intercept the camera feeds by tapping into an elevator console on the 24th floor. Okay. That's great. Except, obviously, it's all part of the setup. Because this is an ambush, because Shadowrun. No, I haven't had a chance to try yet, G-Man. I'm pretty busy, man. Well, listen, you know, Mel Gibson's got some issues, <laughs> obviously. But Mel Gibson was very good in, um, he was good in Lethal Weapon, and he was very good as Mad Max. He just was, straight up. Now, after that, he got very weird and serious problems with misogyny and other things, but... Without warning, your comlink screen bursts into static. You hear a telltale series of clicks. Someone has established an audio connection to your comlink. A moment later, a deep, sonorous voice speaks into your ear. You recognize it instantly. Your lodge contact, Luca Dur. Arvanelleron. Do not speak, just listen. Oh god, this guy. I have a proposition for you. I understand that your team is currently en route to retrieve a package. The MKV-1 prototype, if I'm not mistaken. My associates and I are interested in acquiring the MKV-1 for our own studies. We would like you to deliver the device to us. Once you've acquired the MKVI, you will proceed back to the garage as planned. There you will find a transport parked beside your client's van. Load the MKVI into the transport and you will be rewarded. Herr Schmidt will also be dealt with to protect you from reprisal. To accept our offer, simply proceed as instructed and return the prototype to us. Please note that we need the MKVI in undamaged condition. If it's not in full working order, it's useless to us. As I'm sure that you're aware, the Lodge takes good care of its friends. 
Trust me, Arvin Eleron, it'll be to your advantage to help us. 